right, so today we're in the Duke of Fluke tournament. We're uh, fishing for flounder, first time all year. Hopefully we could get into, you know, some decent fish. We're fishing kind of shallow today, trying to stay away from all that boat traffic. Uh, what I'm gonna probably start off with is this voodoo shrimp. And I also have a tandem rig as well. So stay tuned, we'll see how we do. All right, so we're gonna start out with putting some Procure on this shrimp, uh, you know, voodoo shrimp. I'd say, you know, <clears throat> I don't know, ever so often you definitely want to add scent to it. Um, if you're casting, if you're casting around, you probably want to change or add more as you go on. All right, so I'm going to start out casting and retrieving this little voodoo shrimp and just kind of slow working it on the bottom. Why I picked the shrimp to start off, um, this time of year we do get a decent shrimp run in the back bay and seems like uh, most of the flounder that I'm filleting have grass shrimp and some bigger size shrimp in their stomach. So I'm gonna try and match the hatch and feed them what they're eating. So our biggest disadvantage, as you can tell, our depth finder is on the fritz. Picked a great day for it to go out, but kind of going off of uh, you know, knowledge of the spot of fishing it and every once in a while I'll probably pull out my phone and look at Navionics to try and make sure I'm in like the right areas. Let's go. Oh yeah. That's a nice fish. Nicer. Gotta get that net. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Oh hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Look at that. Let's measure this guy. So we're in a predicament, man. We're in a tournament and it's one heaviest fish. One heaviest fish takes it all in the kayak division. So I don't, we're gonna measure this guy. We have to use pliers. He inhaled this shrimp. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Close your mouth, buddy. Can't measure you with the open mouth. There we go. So it's an overslot fish at 19 inches. So we're on the board. I'm gonna throw him on the uh, ringer and we'll put him over overboard. All right, I'm gonna try just jigging. I'll tell you, you don't realize how much a depth finder really helps when you're flounder fishing because biggest thing for me is depths so right now I'm kind of just going off of how long it takes my you know quarter ounce jig to get to the bottom and kind of just trying to figure out um, where the ledges are just based off of you know how much line I'm letting out and if when I'm drifting I'm passing over a spot that feels like it drops off oh yeah I've got another flatty I think oh yeah look at that guy That might be a slot right there. Uh, let's get the tournament board. What do we do with that? Here we go. Let's see what we got. Nope, just a heartbreaker. 15 and a half. All right, man, so we're gonna head towards the inlet. We got only like a couple more hours to fish, so figure we'll send it and try and fish some deeper water, deeper structures. Oh! Definitely had something to grab onto that. We're gonna try jigging in the mouth of this creek. Kind of keeps us away from the boat traffic. Might be something. Ooh. Ah. Oh, had something hit the shrimp. That's a good sign. There we go. Oh, had him and dropped him. Damn. That was a small one though. Kind of had that like 
machine gun hit. Wasn't the thump we were looking for. All right, so uh, weigh-ins just ended. We ended up doing uh, not bad for not being much of a flounder fisherman. I ended up uh, placing in fourth place, missed out on uh, getting some money uh, with third place uh, by like an ounce or so. So, you know, a little bit of a heartbreaker. But, I mean, we kind of had an idea that you needed a, a three-pound-plus fish if you wanted to, you know, make some money. And I kind of knew uh, going into the weigh-ins that we probably didn't really have much of a chance. But uh, overall, still a fun day. Uh, a little bit of slower action. I think, you know, with the water temperature kind of fluctuating, that kind of had a, a, a role in it. Also, uh, the boat traffic, I will say this, um, don't know how many more Saturdays I'll fish, you know, busy areas like that because, you know, the inlet where I was was like an absolute zoo and, you know, I don't find any fun, you know, getting waked for hours on end, but, you know, it's a learning experience, so I learned a lot today. Last thing, um... I do want to uh, give a quick shout out to Kathy and George from Sterling Harbor. Um, their tackle shop is amazing. If you've if you've never been down there and you're in the Wildwood area, I suggest you stop in to Sterling Harbor Tackle. Um, they pretty much have everything under the sun that you would need for you know an outing out on the water, and you know you get a very family like vibe when you go in the store. You know they they take their time to help everyone that's coming in and. You know, you just got to love it and support a small business like them.